Chair. Uh, I call uh, the Honourable Alfred Nara. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, the, um, the two previous speeches uh, from the Greg O'Connor and also to Deborah Russell were the worst speeches of uh, Chardonnay socialism. They were both incoherent and inconsistent, and uh, one was full of arrogance, the other was full of ignorance. Uh, and obviously both of them did not read the bill, because if they did, they would have actually known what the bill is actually all about. Um, I remember that uh, this reminds me, when I look at this bill and the changes that have been made in part two of this bill and the whole part of the bill and amendments, there was uh, an academic uh, theologian by the name of Marcion. Uh, he was in Rome in 160 AD. And what he did is that he took the Bible uh, and the writing of the Bible and the word, and what he did is that he decided he only wanted to make it sound good so that he was pleasing to the people. And this reminds me of, so he, he took all the bits that revealed the truth and he had all the bits that made people feel good about themselves. The, the big problem with him was that when he talked about a God of love and a God of hate and a God of war, he was unsure about how to make it consistent because what he was afraid of was the truth. And this bill that is before us today is similar to that, Madam Chair. It's afraid of the truth. So they've got the razor blades out like Marcion. They've cut out all the bits, the bits that made them feel uncomfortable. They want to, be pop, they want to play populist politics. And in particular in part two, I want to, I want to refer to the, to the part of the bill in part two in clause 59. And here's what it says. Um, it says, MSD may on a case-by-case -case basis do either or both the following. Make the grant of an exceptional circumstance benefit subject to any conditions imposed. B, impose on uh, the beneficiary the work test or work preparation obligations. Now, what's so hard about that? What's so bad about that? Well, here again is a government and a minister uh, and members on the other side who have not read this bill. Because you need to go all the way back to the purpose of the bill. What does the purpose of the bill state? And yes, it's in part one, but it relates to part two, Madam Chair. And it simply says this, to help people to find or retain paid employment. Let's look at the principle of the bill. And here it is, 4A. Work and paid employment offers the best opportunity for people to achieve, and let's wait for it, social and economic well-being. Social and economic well-being. So here's what I want to say to the minister and to those opposite. Give us the rationale and the reasons why you would take that all together. It's not mean-spirited, it's consistent and congruent with the intent of the bill. But where does this come from? The previous minister, Minister Cepoloni, said to us in the House just before the dinner break, this is old stuff that we were bringing in, that this opposition was trying to introduce old ways. We're talking about the new ways. Well, I just so happened to go out into the back there, into the lobby, and what do I have to pull out? The Hansards of 1938, 12th of September, and let's look at the speech that was made by the Honourable Mr Fagan, by the way, who was a Labour Minister and a Labour MP. When he introduced the bill, and I know Mr O'Connor talked about it being a car, it was actually not, not 1936, he's got to get his models right, it was 1938 when the bill was introduced into Parliament, and I love what he says here. Now you may call it old school, but nothing has changed either in the purpose or in the principles of the Act, but I love this. And here's what he says to us. We all know that the old saying, cut your coat according to your cloth. That's a little bit of old school. In other words, live within your means. An idealist and a visionary must use all the cloth in making a coat and find for himself, otherwise he may find himself minus his trousers. <laughs> minus his trousers. Madam Chair, I hope I haven't breached any protocols here, but it just seems really simple to me. In 1938, live within your means. So while you're out there and you want to sort of have the lolly scramble, you want to be nice and uh, you want to be caring and kind, what's wrong, sorry, Madam, Madam Chair, what is wrong with ensuring the fact is that people have the great opportunity which work affords to them? It's clear, since 1938, amended in 1964, nothing has changed. Those key purposes, those key principles how are consistent today, and here we are in 2018 debating this bill. This is like the Bible of social policy that exists here in Parliament and for us as legislators. Are we going to be like Marcion to cut out all the good bits, all the bits that we don't like? That's what we'll do. Well, Marcion, that's right, you may like to call him there. I don't think he was Dutch, I think he was Italian, but that's okay. But the fact remains this. What this bill is actually all about and what's being removed by this government today they're taking out the bits that they think are nasty. They're taking out the bits that they think are unkind. There is nothing wrong with giving people an opportunity for those that are on a benefit for work. Because why? What does it say here? And I'll read it again for the members on the other side. So the Chardonnay Socialist, work and paid employment offers the best opportunity for people to achieve social and economic well-being. Isn't that the intent of the House? Isn't that the intent of this bill? If it is, 
then why would you take out work test obligations? Why would you remove that? So I move, Madam Chair, that we accept supplementary order paper in my name, which happens to be written so well, which talks about in clause 59 to replace that which has been amended. Hallelujah, brother. Uh, I call Brett Hudson. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's an absolute pleasure.